In this lesson, you'll learn how to define untranslates and mistranslates. To learn how to define untranslates and mistranslates, we'll edit a job in the Odell versus Wolf manufacturing case. When you write a steno outline that has not yet been defined in any dictionary that you chose for translation, it appears in the text file as steno. This is called an untranslate. When you write steno which partially translates, or translates as a different word or spelling than you intended, this is called a mistranslate. You will edit untranslates and mistranslates by defining them. There are five quick steps to defining untranslates and mistranslates. First, you'll position the cursor at the beginning of the untranslate. Next, you'll mark the steno. Third, you'll select the type of define. We'll talk more about define types in just a moment. Then, you'll type the correct text, and the last step is to press Enter or click OK to complete the define. On line 2 of this file, you can see untranslated steno. This steno was written for the name Travis. Step 1 is to position the cursor at the beginning of the untranslate you want to define. As you learned in the navigation lesson, you can point and click or press keys to move a word or a line at a time, but the fastest way to move the cursor to the next untranslate will be to scan to it. I'll press F8 and scan forward. Step 2 is to select or mark the steno to tell Case Catalyst exactly what you want to define. I'm using the default keyboard map, so the keys that I would press to mark will be Shift plus the right arrow. If I don't mark the steno, or if I only mark the first stroke, Catalyst will assume I only want to define the first stroke of this untranslate. Because I want to define both strokes as the name Travis, I'll press Shift plus the right arrow twice to mark both strokes. Step 3 is to select the preferred type of define. There are three commonly used types of steno defines, D defines, K defines, and J defines. The type of define you select will determine which dictionary the steno and matching text entry will be stored in, the personal dictionary, a case dictionary, or a job dictionary. The question you'll ask yourself at this point in the defining process will be, which dictionary is the appropriate place to store this particular steno in text? When the steno is for a common word or phrase that might occur in any job, the best type of define is a dedefine, that is, defined to the personal dictionary. That way, the steno is defined not just for this one job, but will be available for translation in any and every job in the future. If the steno is for a word or phrase that might be used in other jobs you'll be taking that are all part of the same case, but that same steno would not be used or mean the same thing for jobs outside that case, the define should be a k-define and go into a case dictionary. For example, you might have a business name or terminology that's specific to the jobs in that case and probably wouldn't come up in jobs outside that case. Defining to a case dictionary means that the steno is defined for this job and can be used to help translate other jobs in that same case that might use that same case-specific word or phrase or name or term. If the steno is for a word or phrase that is unique for one particular job, the define should be a j-define and go into the job dictionary. The steno will be defined for that job only. Now, let's get back to this job. I scanned to the untranslated steno, and I marked both strokes. Now, I need to decide what type of define is the best for the steno for Travis. The name Travis, spelled as T-R-A-V-I-S, is not unique to this particular job or this particular case. Therefore, I should dedefine it and put it in the personal dictionary. To dedefine, I'll press Control D. Next, I'll type the correct text capital T, lowercase r, a, v, i, s. And last, I'll press Enter, which is the equivalent of clicking OK in the dialog box, and completes the define. Notice that the steno for Travis was not only fixed on line 2, it was also fixed on line 5. Whenever you define untranslated steno or mistranslated text, the change is applied forward from that point to all identical occurrences of that same steno and or text. Defines are also referred to as globals because the change is made globally or in many places. You can choose to replace or insert text rather than define for a local or one-spot change rather than a global change, but for fastest and most efficient editing, you'll most frequently use globals. Notice also that the color of the defined text is pink. 
That's the default color assigned to all globals. As you learned in Edit Lesson 2, this is something you can modify if you prefer a different color. Okay, now let's define a couple of mistranslates so that you can review the steps you've just learned. Step 1 is to position the cursor. I'll press F8 to scan to the next untranslate. Step 2 is to mark the steno in text I want to define. I'll press Shift plus the right arrow for each steno stroke or word I want to mark. Step 3 is to select the define type. This steno stands for engineer. Engineer is a common word that might be used in any job, so it should be a D-define. I'll press Control D. Step 4 is to type the text, so I'll type Engineer. And Step 5 is to press Enter to complete the define. Okay, now just one more time and then you should be ready to go practice these steps. The next thing that needs to be fixed is the mistranslate Wolf Manufacturing. Wolf should be spelled with two F's, W-O-L-F-F, -F, and Manufacturing should be initial capped. Pressing F8 to scan wouldn't work here, because the word wolf isn't an untranslate or a conflict, it's just text. Scan would skip right over it. So this time, I'll just use my arrow keys to move over to wolf. Now, I'll mark wolf manufacturing. Wolf manufacturing is a company name. I don't know if it will ever come up again in another job outside this case. I do know that there are other jobs that I have yet to translate in this case, and the name of this company might come up again. So, as this company name is a case-specific term, I'll press Control k and use a K-Define. Before I start typing, let me point out something you've probably noticed. There are a number of buttons under the new text field. These buttons invoke various commands that may reduce the amount of typing you have to do. For example, notice that one of these buttons is labeled Cap. This command will copy the text shown here at Old Text, here to New Text, and then initial cap it. Isn't that great? I just saved myself 18 keystrokes. Now, all I have left to do is to type that extra F at the end of wolf. I'll point and click at the end of wolf and type the extra F. And now I'll press Enter. You now know how to define untranslates and mistranslates as words and phrases. To practice defining words and phrases, Go into the training user and follow the directions for exercise number 5 in the Edit Practice document. When you're ready, proceed to the next lesson in order.